Hello and welcome to another edition of Labrador Lodge Project. Today we're in the dining room. We're going to be replacing this old useless fixture and doing a bunch of painting in here. I've got paint supplies, I've got a new fixture, I've got everything except my work clothes on. So I'm going to go ahead and get changed and we'll be right back here to replace this fixture so we can finally see in this room when the sun goes down. The first thing I want to do is deal with this light. Now every light is going to have some sort of connector to the ceiling. This is usually just a little plate that lets you cover over the wires and such. This one has little thumb screws we're going to turn off. Now the way this is put up, when I lowered this down, what I found is that this is actually held up by that. And here are the wires coming down, you see the hook to the wire nuts. I really can't let go of this, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and unhook these and take them off. Now make sure you have the power off when you do this. Would not be good to do with the power on. Okay, we've got this old lamp off. Now that we have the light down, we've gotten some white ceiling paint, and I'm going to go ahead and paint all around this area. And don't just paint right around where it connects. Go out of it. The last thing you want to do is run your roller over and then get paint all over your nice new fixture. When you have a lot of surfaces to paint that are the same color, like all of my ceilings all through the house where I'm using just a plain flat white, you can save some money by buying it in this big five gallon container. But these are hard to pour from and you can make an awfully big mess very easily. So here's a little helpful tip so that you can build yourself a little scoop. If you have a bottle or a milk jug or anything else, go ahead and take that, take your pocket knife, and cut. cut the top off of that and now you have a nice scoop so you can scoop out some paint. You can scoop it into here and paint out of it so you can do trim or small areas or you can just use it to scoop out and pour it into your rolling tray until you get this down to a level where it's easier to manage. So now the next thing we need to do is bring up the wires 
We'll bring up the lamp, see where we want it to hang, and then cut the wire to length. Okay, so we have our fixture. We've got to figure out roughly where we want it to be. And you know, we know how tall this ladder is when you stand next to it. It gives you some idea of how high things are. We really don't want this to get too low. Uh, it's an up-facing light, so the light bounces off of the ceiling. We want it to not be too low, but not too high. Somewhere, judging by the way the windows are and some other things, somewhere around there would be good. I think that'll be the length. We may need an additional amount for wire, so we're going to cut the wire right around there. In typical understatement, they say you can put this up without really any tools. I don't know how you do that. So what I did first is I used a pair of wire cutters and I cut off that length we want. Uh, I did that for the ground wire as well. Now what we need to do here is we need to separate out the two halves of this wire. I'm going to take a pocket knife. It's going to slip that right in between in that area. Be careful you don't cut yourself doing this. Now we've got them split, we've got the extra split. Now it's time to use your wire strippers if you have wire strippers. If you don't have wire strippers, that's okay. This is like the other day when I didn't have my hammer. Well, today I don't have my wire cutter. Okay, there's one. We got one off. I ended up using my wire cutters and just carefully cutting that. Now I'm going to twist the braids together. That's got one. Now we've got one. We go ahead and do the other one. Okay, that's got the other one. As you can see, all jobs are easier if you have the right tools, and I don't have the right tool today. Alright, I've got these hooked up, so now, the next piece is that there is this chain, and it hangs by this chain. And, well, we have a lot of chain, as you can see, we don't really have a lot of wire, so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and figure out exactly how much chain we're going to need. And we need about this far. So we'll go ahead and take off. Okay, so our wires go up through this ring. So we're going to go ahead and feed them up the middle of the ring. And then this ring screws on to the lamp. Just like this. Go ahead and throw that all the way down until it's on there tight. Okay, now that's where that goes. Then our piece of chain that we cut off, it clicks. It clips onto there. Now, really, this is just a pain, I'll tell you what. Thinking about getting a lamp that uses a chain, you know what, maybe you should think twice. I'm gonna, here's, here's one that I already, I, I took this one off, I'll just take more off the other end. I'm not gonna do so many of these. So there's that piece. Put this piece onto it. We'll take our
And there we go, we've got that back on there. We need to braid these through the chain. Now I'm not going to go through every link because that is just too much. What I'll do is I'll bring it up, I'll pass it next to the links that run in one direction and go through the links that run in the other. Basically just every other one go through this one and then we'll go through this one. Now it is ready to go up top. Okay, we've attached our chain, we've run our wire through our chain. Now it's important to get every stupid little piece of this thing on here in the right order. We have to do it all over again. And just so you know, this is the third time I've tried to put this damn thing together. So, I've got the chain on, and now I'm going to put this stupid plate on. That goes on, oh no wait, before the stupid plate is this, this stupid little washer. This goes on first. Okay, it goes on, that's the right direction. Stupid little washer goes on. Then stupid plate goes on. Then we feed these wires through this ridiculously little hole right here and shove them through and they pop out. If we're lucky, they pop out. If they don't get stuck, they pop out up here on the top and they knock out this little plastic thing. We have to put this little plastic thing back on because the hole is too small. Okay, now we've got that on there. All the little pieces are on. Now we'll take this green screw thingy here and we'll attach the ground wire to it after this one without the insulation is. Go ahead and give that a little bend. Make sure you put it on so that when you screw it tight it doesn't unhook. So hook it in the direction of the screw is traveling. And that will keep it on there nice and tight. Now we're ready to take this whole contraption up there and screw it back into the ceiling and then find out that the chain is too long. So we're going to make sure that we take all of our tools up the ladder with us and go ahead and put this lamp up and let's hope it's the last time. Okay, here we are up on this ladder again. So what we need to do is we need to take this mounting bracket that we had up there once before, but now we have to put it up there for real because we had to take it down because of all these silly pieces that had to go in a certain order through here. The hardest part was getting the wires to run through. So we've got this, and now because we have to hold the weight of this whole thing while we're putting it up, which is absolutely ridiculous, but it's how they want you to do it, we have to be you know, very careful as we go ahead and put this in, we'll put in one screw at a time, and get them started. Take these wires out of the way. We'll go ahead and put this screw in a little bit more. screw most of the way in. Before I get things tightened down, I want to get the other screw started. So we'll go ahead and put that screw in and get it going. Okay. I'll have to use my other hand here because the lamp's in the way. Here we are, 
I've got these started and most of the way screwed in. Go ahead and screw them the rest of the way in. Now the bracket's up there. So what we can do is now we want to attach our wires, which are up here, to these existing wires. So we take one of our wires and we put these two together, give them a little bit of a, of a wrap. Remember, we want to wrap in the direction that we're going to be putting on the wire nut. Okay. And wire nuts are provided. We'll go ahead and put this first one on. Okay, that one's on. Now we'll go ahead and wind this other one on. Put another wire nut. Right, that's got all those on there. With those on, now we could put some electrical tape, but this seems to be pretty well separated. I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Just going to go ahead and, and push these different ones a little away from each other so they don't cause any problems. Now this little plate goes over top. And then this washer thing goes up and holds that on. Now that's on there up to the ceiling. Now we've got this chain, which is decorative. Well, we generally want to put the weight on the wires. We want to put this up. And as you can see, we've got way too many links here. So that's okay. We'll run this back up. We'll see where we need to trim it off. We want to hang it off of this one. We need to take this one off. Okay. Need to bet just a hair more. Take off this link if we don't need. up, slip this onto that piece, great, just a little too small. Okay, now it's on there. Whew. Open these up a little. And then we'll go ahead and squeeze this link back shut. So 
it looks pretty. And voila, we have a lamp. And we just want to go ahead and turn that down a little bit so that we get it centered the way we want it. All right, now that it's hanging and it's, and it's up here and it looks nice, we can go ahead and take off these protective wraps that were keeping it from getting knocked around too much while I was fiddling with it. We've got these rings that come off, three of them. these nice uh, lampshades. The lampshade goes on. Let's put all three lampshades on. And with the lampshades on, I'll climb up a little higher so I can get in there. Then I'll screw these clamps back in. That keeps the lampshades from wobbling around or falling off. Oh my god, quick, somebody call Al Gore. I'm using an incandescent light bulb. And now comes the moment of truth. Did all of this work? Ta-da! Well, boy, that looks really nice. Look how much difference has already been made in this room by putting in a much brighter fixture and getting that dirty ceiling painted a nice crisp white. And now it's time for some dramatic change as we start putting the finish coat on the wall. Now this paint, unlike the ceiling paint, which will need a second coat, this paint is paint and primer and one, they say it covers everything. I've never used it before. We're going to find out if it's really worth the extra money right now. Well, I've been painting for a while now and I've used up all of the paint in that can, but it still wasn't enough. I still have edging around the ceiling to do, and I really need to put a second coat on because that primer plus paint in one didn't do the job it said it was going to do. Now, looking at the wall here behind me, uh, you have to sort of imagine that the doorway and this cabinet here will be painted in bright white, and that's going to be offsetting this purple color. And then you see here at the fireplace, they've got this white metal, and then someone has painted the brick white. If you have real brick, don't paint it. It kind of makes it ruined, and it'd be really hard to take this off. So instead, I'm going to repaint it. But because we have white over here on the cabinet, and white around the doorways, and, and white in a lot of places, this is a whole lot of white. So what I've decided to do is use more of a charcoal gray, a slate gray, is going to go on this portion, and then this will stay white, and that will be black with the white inside, and it will make it so that this pops out a little bit, and there isn't so much white, white, white all along this wall, which would be a little bit too much.
And there you have it. It's all done. We've got our gray. We'll be retouching this with fresh white. Remember, there'll be white on either side. And that ought to make for this to really pop out and look really great once it's fresh white with the white on either side and sort of subdue slightly this fireplace so it isn't too much white in this room. Plus the purple and gray are complementary colors. Should go together really nicely. All right, that's it for today. It's getting near around midnight, so it's time for me to knock off and come back to this tomorrow.